Good morning, uh, friends of St. John's and uh, anybody else uh, watching us. Welcome to our morning Eucharist on uh, this uh, Sunday in the season of Easter. This, I'm told, is our eighth online service, uh, the eighth time that we've met in this way um, whilst we're not able to meet together in our buildings. And I do hope and I pray that this is helping you, that this is helping you maintain your connection both with the church and most importantly with God. It's been good to connect with many of you in our uh, week, uh, midweek meetings, our Tuesday Compline and our Wednesday morning communion, and also in our various prayer meetings that um, we're trying to organise. I hope you're um, being blessed by that and able to support them. So let us come to our worship this morning. As we gather, let's focus our minds on God as we think of him. Heavenly Father, we ask for your presence with us as we worship, albeit in uh, strange and unusual circumstances, that your spirit will be with us. Amen. The Lord be with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The first thing that we do in our worship is to make our relationship right with God. We want to come before him and acknowledge that there are those things that we've done, thought and said, indeed things we've not done, which leave us short of the standards we would set ourselves and in need of God's forgiveness. So Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. So we pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By being reconciled with God through Jesus Christ, we come into his presence with thanksgiving and worship. So we're going to say the words of the Gloria together, which is a, a worship hymn, really. We normally sing it, but we're going to say it together this morning. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of eternal life. Grant that as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. And now we're going to have our Bible readings, firstly from the book of Acts and then from the Gospel of John. To set the scene for this reading, Stephen, one of the early Christians, has been arrested and brought before the religious authorities. He has just given a speech which has made them extremely angry. So a reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7. Standing before the high priest and the council, 
Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him and the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Lord be with you, and, and also, also with you. you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, you O Lord. Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father? and the Father is in me. The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do these works that I do, and, in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you, O Christ. So now we're going to look at God's Word together. And I'm focusing on the uh, Gospel reading uh, this morning, John 14, uh, 1 to 14. Jesus says this, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Then he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then he says this, I and the Father are one. I and the Father are one. So I want to ask you before I even start, who do you think that Jesus is? What is the basis of your reason for being here? Jesus was a Jew. We know that for sure. Judaism stood out in the time of Jesus and for centuries before that as what we call monotheistic. Monotheistic means that you believe in the worship of one God and one God alone. 
Most people of faith today are monotheistic, not all, but most. But it hasn't always been so. In fact, at the time of Jesus, Judaism was pretty much unique in believing in a monotheistic faith. And it had been unique for centuries. And its worship of one God, and their insistence that there was only one God, put it at odds with all its neighbours for the whole of its existence. Worshipping God, or Yahweh, as they called him, contrasted sharply with Egyptian religion when they were slaves. It then came into conflict with Canaanite religion when they came to the Promised Land after the Exodus. It conflicted with the religion of Assyria at the time of the kings, and then with the people of Babylon in the time of the exile. Monotheism clashed with Greek culture when the Greek Empire ruled the world. And then finally, of course, came the Romans. All of these were polytheistic religions where the gods were based on exaggerated views of human beings, people projected onto the sky, if you like. And they either lived up there, up in the clouds, or on a mountain somewhere. The Jewish God was different. He transcended all these things. God was not to be found in creation. God was the creator. And the great Jewish prayer, the Shema, encapsulated the monotheistic essence of Judaism. Hear, O Israel, God is our Lord. God is one. The Shema uh, blends together three sentences from Deuteronomy 6, Deuteronomy 11 and Numbers 15 to encapsulate the essence of Jewish faith, that God was one and only one. Today, Jews recite this twice daily, morning and evening, as a biblical commandment. They recite it just before going to bed, and as, as well as that in the Kedusha service on Shabbat. It's so succinct and so central to the Jewish people that it's the climax of the final prayer of Yom Kippur. And traditionally, it's a Jew's last words on earth. The Lord is one. Jesus himself probably recited this prayer. The disciples most certainly did, as did the apostles later. Every single day, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Into that culture, into that context, Jesus says, I and the Father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Before Abraham was, I am, alluding to the name of God revealed to Moses in the Old Testament. And sometimes when Jesus said these things, his Jewish listeners around him uh, picked up stones to stone him to death, to kill him. For what he was saying to their ears was blasphemous and unforgivable. At Jesus' trial, the point where the high priest declares him guilty is where Jesus says, from now on you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. It was too much for the Jewish priests to bear. But when the church was founded, as, as we, we read about the early church last week, the apostles, some of them came to write some, some of the Gospels, and then they went on to write their theological letters. And when they did, they didn't write more about what Jesus did. They didn't write more Gospels. They wrote about who he was. They write about the one who came to dwell in the fullness of God in bodily form, the creator of the universe. John says famously at the beginning of his Gospel, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. The central message of Christianity, as it evolved from its Jewish roots, was that this faith, this new relationship with God, was not a set of ethical rules. It was not an alternative set of commandments, such as the Torah. It's not a set of proposals 
drawn up to somehow make you right with God if you fulfill certain obligations. It's not a Western version of a set of holy writings that you happen to be accidentally born into if you're not Hindu, Muslim or anything else. The central essence of the Christian faith is the exclusive claim to know the personality of God in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus is God's self-disclosure to us, God's self-revelation. And Christianity is the invitation to step into a relationship with God through God himself. So Jesus doesn't mediate us to God. Jesus is God revealed to us. And in knowing Jesus, we know God. And when we look at the way Jesus did things and reacted to things, we take comfort, inspiration and courage. For when we read in these precious few pages of the Gospels, we read the character of God living our life in response to genuine human situations. Go through Jesus' biography as much as we know of it and you will see the following situations. You will see an illegitimate birth, homelessness, peril, exile, temptation, hunger, conflict, bereavement, admiration and hero worship, but family rejection, hatred, loyalty and treachery, adulation, then dismissal, betrayal, injustice, brutality, and eventually murder. That's the potted life history of Jesus. And if you've seen Jesus handling any of those life situations, you've seen the Father. For in that reality, we are assured of things. We are assured that our sins, many of them, probably daily, possibly hourly, they are forgiven. Because Jesus embraced human form, human life is dear to him. We matter. Our affairs are of deep concern to him. Jesus shared every human experience possible. When you go through one of those tunnels, one of those places of darkness, Jesus is there with you. We're also assured that our ultimate faith is not to a thing and not to a set of concepts, but to a living God. And we can live in peace because our destiny, our fate is safe. There is a heavenly home for us. There are many rooms in that place and Jesus goes to make ready a place for us. So our earthly life is lived with Christ and when we die, we are in Christ and in the Father. Everything about you is held in the hand of God. You are knit together in your mother's womb, it says in Psalm 139. Jesus then says, I will never leave you. So that's your whole life dealt with. And then he says, I go to prepare a place for you. It's from womb to tomb, cradle to grave. You're in the hands of God personified and revealed, disclosed in the person of Jesus Christ, of whom we can read and to whom we can pray. We need to know that the Lord our God is one, but that we know him through Jesus Christ. The powers and principalities of the world are not God. So the great gift to you, is this simple assurance, confidence and sense of well-being that allows us to live our lives in shalom, in peace. I see it this way. The gift to me is that everything will be all right in the end. And if everything's not all right, then it's just not the end. There's more still to go. And seeing the Father in Jesus reassures me that in the middle of this crazy journey through COVID-19 and economic hardship and separation and isolation, my life and your life is held in Christ, in God. We are, as it were, in the boat on the stormy sea at the moment, but Jesus is in the boat with us. And that which needs to be resolved and healed and brought to an end 
will be resolved and healed and brought to an end. Because in Jesus, we see Almighty God. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Amen. With that in mind, that baffling concept of Jesus, Father and Spirit being one in divine unity, let us profess our faith together. So we read, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. So we believe as Christians that we are not just commanded, but privileged to come before God in prayer. So we're going to lift up uh, those things that are on our hearts, those things that trouble us and burden us, both for ourselves, for our country and for other people, as we intercede for the nation. So let's bow our heads and pray. Risen and reigning Lord, Assure our troubled hearts that you have gone to prepare a place for us, so that where you are, we may be also. We acknowledge that you alone are the way, the truth and the life, by whom the Father comes to us, so that through you we have seen him and know him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen and reigning Lord, how often we are like the disciples, questioning what you say and doubting what we hear. Help us to listen to your promises, to receive your assurances, to let them take root in our hearts. To allow you to remove troubles from our hearts and remembering your constant presence with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen and reigning Lord, we pray for all the people of the world so prominent in the news, those who are victims of the pandemic, of other things, accident, war and disease, violence, greed and natural disasters. We look forward to the hope in Christ of the new heaven and the new earth and ask for your mercy upon us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen and reigning Lord, we pray for family, colleagues, friends, lovers, children, colleagues, everyone, neighbours, strangers, all those people that we are connected with. For those with whom we break bread at home, for those we miss at our place of work, in the community, in our church. We give you thanks for social media, the internet and technology, which allows us to keep in touch with those we love and those we miss. We give you thanks that now there is renewed opportunity to venture out a little more into the world and ask for your protection as we emerge from this time of lockdown gradually that you will keep us safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The risen and reigning Lord, whose touch alone could heal the sick, hear our prayers for those servants of yours who are ill as we ask for your help and mercy to restore them to health. We pray for those whose hearts have been saddened by the death of someone close and someone dear to them, for members of our church family who have died. Help us to experience the comfort of the Holy Spirit within us and the fellowship of the church family around us until we are reunited once more in the house that we call your house. Pray, Lord, for Doris and Bill Dewsbury as they mourn the passing of Doris's brother, Morris, 
we, uh, we lift up to you the Cook family for Claire's father as he has passed away. We pray for Elaine Luck and her family as she mourns the death of her fa father, for Simon, Catherine and John Patrick, who are saddened by the passing of Mary, whose funeral is this coming week. The Lord, we lift up to you Maureen Scales and her family. She passed away on the uh, on April the 21st. Please be with them and bless them as we prepare together for her funeral at the end of the month. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, as best we can, we're going to share the peace with each other, which is our way of saying we are one with each other, our relationships are good, and we then will come to the altar and uh, share the Eucharist together. And after we've shared the peace, we will break for an act of sung worship, which this week Helen Morris will be bringing to us. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. And they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Share a sign of peace with each other. So as we prepare to share the Eucharist together, let's break for an act of sung worship. It's right. 
So having studied the word together, having shared peace with each other, and having expressed our love for God in worship, we now come to the Lord's table to share the Eucharist, to partake in the sacrament together. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father, and in these days of Easter to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of his Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, shared it with them and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took a cup of wine. Again, he gave you thanks, shared it and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, as we remember all that Jesus did, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. So by whom and with whom and in whom and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours. Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. We are called children of God, and by baptism that is indeed what we have become. And so we have the courage to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, Christ our Passover, who was sacrificed for us. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. We pray together. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, 
that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. body of Christ, keep you in eternal life. The blood of Christ, keep you in eternal life. Let us pray. Eternal God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life, grant us to walk in his way, to rejoice in his truth and to share his risen life, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. I have just a few notices uh, for you uh, this Sunday. Um, remember that I am emailing daily devotions and prayers um, and also trying to keep people updated with things that are going on particularly within the church if you do come across anyone who it strikes you would benefit from being on that email list just drop me a line and i will happily put them on that's already happened four or five times uh, since we started so i'm very pleased to be able to do that if uh, if i can um, please remember those people in your prayers that we we prayed for earlier um, and i'm mindful that there are many other people uh, in uh, great distress at the moment. So one of the things we can do as a body is pray. Um, for the week to come, um, we are following the same pattern as we have done the past two or three weeks. On Tuesday evening, we'll do our Coffee and Compline, which is an informal get-together using Zoom video conferencing, followed by a short uh, meditative Compline service. And that begins at 730 and I distribute the um, access details for that on the email list. So um, please do attend that if you can. Our midweek communion service is at, on Wednesday at 10.30, which is also on Zoom, it uses the same access code. So it's, uh, if you can attend one, you can attend the other. Um, coming up, uh, and I by the time um, you're hearing this, I hope to have done this, so we'll, we'll you know, I'm a hostage to fortune now, we'll see how we get on. I'm uh, planning to hold a short memorial service, our annual memorial service on the afternoon of May the 24th at 4 p.m. And we will do it live uh, using Zoom. It's not the uh, same nature of service as we've done in the past uh, because of the restrictions, but we can do our best. And we can uh, share some prayers, read out the names using the technology. And uh, there's no reason why we can't do that. So I'm hoping that my email asking for names and for names of people to be remembered has already gone out. Um, and that will um, that will spur me to do it now. Um, make sure I get that done. And we've also written to people who are not on email to invite them to respond uh, with at least with names, if, even if they can't attend uh, online. So that's the 24th of May at 4 p.m. on Zoom. Let us pause, allow the Holy Spirit to minister calm and peace into our hearts 
and to lead us to Jesus, who is one with the Father. The Lord be with you. The God of peace, who brought Jesus the great shepherd back from the dead through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work and pleasing in his sight. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank you.